success isn't about hard work. It's about consistent work. Yes. Consistent work is hard work. What's up, guys? Today's guest is a professional actor known for his role as Kenny Lee on Supergirl and a cast member on Power Rangers Ninja Steel and Hyperforce. Please welcome to the Jam Cast, Mr. Peter Sidarso. What's up, dog? What's up, dude? Dude, I've been waiting for this one forever. I dig that, by the way. Thank you for putting Supergirl first. I appreciate that. <laughs> I got to shout out the most recent credits, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also a huge one for the Asian American community, man. Dude, it's for me, it was like being able to say I'm a Kryptonian, you know? Like, well, I mean, it's only for that one cut because oh. I was only like saying that. But still, I was like, for a second, there was an Asian American Kryptonian. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and I think what's even crazier is you had someone of like a love interest. Yeah. Which to me was almost a bigger step for Asian Americans as we're starting to see in film and television, you know? I, I actually was really lucky with this one. Um, I, this is a, a reprise role. Okay. So actually, Kenny Lee had existed in a different universe, Whoa. but he died. No way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. He was actually played by, by another, um, I gotta look him up. He's, he's uh, one of my buddy's friends. Okay. So when I got it, it was like, oh shoot, you are this guy come back to life. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was super fun. That is crazy, man. And like, obviously, we're gonna talk about tons of shows that you've done, but what was the process of getting Super Gold? Did they seek you out or did you have to go through the whole audition process? I had to, I had to do the audition process. I actually did it um, a year before. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Because they were gonna come bring him back as like an older character. And as you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older. Yes. But when they saw me, they were like, uh, I don't think that this is the right time. And uh, the role came back up, but younger, like no a year way. later. way. Okay. Yeah. So I actually had auditioned for like the 26, 27-year-old him when he was like a police or something. <laughs> but they changed the scripts and everything. And I came back as like 17. And I was no like, no way. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take it, you know? <laughs> Which is so crazy because we all know that you're not 17 no. years old. <laughs> Dude, uh, but Hollywood, man. Yeah, it that's, that's the is. one thing I tell people all the time. I'm like, um, what you don't realize is like these kids that play teenagers are grown adults. Like, I got a friend who was on a Disney show and by the third season, he had to shave twice a day during the yeah. filming, you know? At that point, you're like, oh my gosh. Um, it's nice to hold the, the, the roles because you're working. But also at the same time, you're like, oh, how do I hold on to this energy? I got to be so yeah. young for so long, you know? Andrew. And it's, it's actually like exhausting, you know? And so just based on that <laughs> timeline alone with Supergirl, was that auditioning process happening during COVID? So was a lot of your stuff virtual as opposed to normal? Everything was. Wow. Which was actually to my benefit. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I, um, I was actually dating somebody at the time. So reading, she was reading with me. Ooh, so so the helps. chemistry was, yeah, it was super easy. I was going to ask easy. you, well, what is your take on the virtual auditioning compared to in person? Because for the longest time, even as a commercial actor, yeah. I used to always be like, I hate driving. Bro, I by the way, parking. we got to talk about that. Oh, we're, yeah, dude, we got to talk about that. <laughs> the way me and Peter met is something I'll never forget, bro. And ever. so like random, because like if you think about it, that doesn't happen anymore. Never. Like never. I've never been on a set where like you see the other actor and you're like, wait, we both got paid for it? <laughs> so, yo, all right. Yo. You know what? We're going we're gonna to break the wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this, bro. So, so a lot of people would assume that I probably knew you through your brother, Yoshi. Which kind of technically. It technically is technically, true. Technically, yeah. But the way that we met, and I'll tell my side of the story, yeah. and then I'll let you tell your <laughs> side. So I show up to a casting. This is at a time where, for lack of a better term, I was booking commercials nonstop. Whoa. Like, hey. you know, yeah, yeah. I was, I was killing the game back then. Yeah. There, uh, the year before, I had booked 11 nationals in a year. So I was on. Holy crap. I was on fire, bro. Yo. Yeah. I was, I was at the point where my agents were like, you can't even go out because you have a conflict in every category. Clothes, cars, I mean, gas. Yeah. Good problem to have. Good problem to have. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm hot shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Then I get a call for this commercial. It had a code name. I forgot the code name back in the Beard day. China. Oh, you remember? Oh, of course I remember. That was my first it was job. your first job. Yeah. Beard China. So I show up. I'm like, Beard China. This is weird. Long story short. I go and I, I always look for your brother's name at the sign-in sheets. What? Because I'm always like, this pretty mother yeah. is going to take my spot. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't see him there. I saw your name. And I yeah. was like, who is this guy? That's crazy that you knew us. Yeah. Bro, because from my end, I look like the, we were zero. And uh, Yoshi had been trying, but he, he had like not made this audition. He actually got it from Craigslist. No way, bro. Yoshi is the hardest Craigslist. freaking hustler that I have ever... The only reason I have this career is because of Yoshi. Wow. I couldn't make, he couldn't make that audition, so he sent me. And I was, I was doing architecture at the time. Yeah, so I go there and I was like, holy crap. That guy's from, I think Harry Shum or... Uh, 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Cloud was there. Yes, they were Daniel, Cloud Campos. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I saw you, and I was like, I know that guy from the media. (laughs) Like, holy (laughs) crap. What the heck is going on? And Booba was there too for yeah, the, the call Stewart before. Was there. Yeah, yep, yep. and I was it like, was all the Asians, bro. Yeah, I was like, what is this? This is from Craigslist, Beard China. What the heck? Yes. And then, uh, yeah, and, and because Yoshi couldn't make it, I got to do that. And then we actually got to be on set together. Yeah, the craziest thing was we ended up at the callback together. And yes. then I was like, God damn it, it's between me and him. <laughs> I'm really stoked for both of us. Yeah. But, so this is what makes this. I the can't most, believe you knew me. This that, is that's the, crazy. This is the most unique story of all time, guys. So. Long story short, we both get cast on the job. Yeah. When we get the call sheet, it literally says Korean boyfriend one, Korean girlfriend one, like Japanese boyfriend one, Japanese boyfriend two. But then for ours, it said Chinese boyfriend one, Chinese boyfriend two. Long story short, guys, not only did they cast us because they couldn't decide who they wanted. Yeah. This ended up being the introduction of FaceTime to the world. What? Apple. That was the Apple FaceTime commercial. Oh my God, that little snippet. Yeah, bro. That literally, where you lay down on the bed and stuff. That, Dude, that was so long ago, bro. man. That was like, holy crap. That was a decade ago. Yeah, oh bro. Oh my God. And so long story short, we end up booking a national Yo. Apple commercial, which is the introduction of FaceTime to the entire world. Yeah. But what made it so unique is they couldn't decide who they wanted. So they made <laughs> us both film the damn commercial. Yeah. <laughs> and they picked him for the final cut. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> But yeah, I, I've never had that experience before in my life. Oh, never. after either. Never. I was like, that was nuts. N- never felt like I was auditioning on set. Yeah. I was like, what is happening right well, now? Well, to me, I didn't know what was going on. Same. Yeah, because I was also like, this is my first job. So I was literally just like, I was in shock and glee because I went from like school, my architecture job. Then suddenly I'm on set and I was like, there's movie stars on set. <laughs> I'm getting paid how much just to be here? Totally. Yeah, I was like. I was, it was surreal. Dude, I remember too, because I remember you were so new because they came up and were like, <laughs> they're like, yeah. hey, are you, are you guys down to cut your hair? And I was like, nope. Yep. And you were like, I'm down. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 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 let's do it. I mean, I've never had a haircut in my life. I do it myself. <laughs> and I swear, I was like, God damn it. I should have said yes, bro. Oh my God. Oh, it's just because so, I didn't know any better too. So funny. Bro. Oh my God. What an introduction though. And that was technically like one of your first jobs. That was my first gig. Your first gig ever was yeah. at Apple From a Craigslist commercial. thing that Yoshi could not make. Bro. Yeah. That and that's how we insane. met. That's how we met. And now I'm in your house like... <laughs> Once a week. And now you're a fixture here at Jam, which thank is you, so crazy. And bro. thank you for that. Of course. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, of like course. um I everybody that knows me knows how much like this place it has changed my life, dude. <laughs> like f- from the bottom of my heart. Dude. Um dancing has it's been my mental saving grace. How long how long have you been into movement? Because I think that's one thing people may not know about you is that like yeah. like, this year as an actor, you but you you've been feel moving. that. Yeah, you because you saw me from the get go when I was like just like freaking. <laughs> oh my god! You used to do like flips and you'd always b boy. So like, how long have you been break dancing and stuff for? So break dancing, I did it back in high school. Okay. And I did it for a year, and I was like, I'm just terrible at this because also at the time I was I came into it not as like an athletic person. Oh, so you didn't have strength and stuff yet. Uh. So I was just like doing like liquid robot and stuff, and people were like this is kind of whack, and like everyone was doing like flares and stuff, and Yoshi had flips. And so I stopped, but then like, I came here and um, I think my main thing was like, everybody was so open yeah. and you have this place that you have is uh, the way that I see in my head is like, it's a temple with like mythical creatures. Dude. I know that sounds weird. <laughs> I feel you though. I know that's not, yeah. Cause it's like yeah. the people that come here are like Red Bull BC one all yeah, stars. Bro. And I'm like, Whoa, holy crap. And they're so open to teaching. It's crazy. And, um, so I, I started coming here at first and it was just for a uh, G, which yeah. is another, which was the f- first project we got to work on since the commercial really. Yeah. 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 And thank you for bringing me on for that. hundred. Cause, uh, dude, that was so much fun playing with Lewis is like, it's crazy. It was crazy. It's crazy. And, and, and what was even crazier and that I have to give you a lot of respect on was full transparency. Initially, I think we tried to give the role to Yosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, thank God. That, again, like he I said. He was busy. Everything, everything in my career. <laughs> that big bro, man. Big bro. Big yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically, Yoshi was busy and we're like, dude, Peter's got similar <laughs> look, bro. Um, he doesn't Very have, different as, vibes, doesn't have as much stun experience. At all. But I was like, bro, I asked you, I was like, will you commit to training for like yeah. a week or two? Yeah. And you were like, I'm down. And bro. No, seriously? 
Dog. That when was you believed crazy, in me, easy, bro. Because that that actually like it was a pivotal moment for me. Yeah. Because for me before that, I was like, oh, shoot, you know, I I'm actually I've, I'm a, I'm a screw up. Like the biggest way to say it is like I'm a screw up. I don't commit to a lot of things and I mess up a lot. And when I got this, I was like, Travis thinks I could do it. Uh, yeah. All right. So I came here every fucking day. Every I day. actually did. You were here every day. Every bro. fucking day. Every day. Yeah, and I, I was with Armand, and I was like, God, I don't know if I could actually do this. <laughs> and I was so damn intimidated because I was like, Louis Tan. Holy crap, I'm acting opposite of him, and I have to be strong. I have to be strong, and I have to be confident in my skills. Yep. But you after know, being here, I actually got the confidence. That's what I realized. I was like, oh, confidence can be something that you earn. Yes. And I was like, oh, shit. And that changed the way that I thought about movement completely. And then after that, I was like, maybe I'm not good at what I'm doing because I've never put time in, which is weird to say, because it's like, there are some things that are uh, like innately born in you that yeah. you are good at. Of course. And there's some things that you are interested in that you might just have to seek out, you know, and put in the time and effort. Yeah. Yeah. And, and being here, it's like, um, everybody's so open. Everybody's so okay to let you mess up yes bro yeah and it's yeah. like uh there's no um and even if it even if there is like a a bit of like a judgment it's to help you rise up it's like oh hey that's not good let me um let me show you a different way that might work yeah it's not like oh this is the way that's gonna be but let me show you you know and if you want to take it take it 100 yeah we're so, we're so blessed here i tell people all the time i'm like Really, jam is you just people, bro. jam is just four walls. What makes it unique is all the people that come in the door, like yourself and everyone else. Because it really is just—it's just a building, right? Anyone can have a building, but the energy. The ener yes, the I energy. Was gonna yeah. say that, bro. The, the energy is only created by the people that we are blessed with to come in. Like you said, I mean, I saw B Boy Morris here last week, who just yes, competed I was just at, gonna say that. He dude. just competed at Rebel BC One. He just yeah. won freestyle session. Yeah, and he's just out here training at Open Gym. Yeah, with everyone else, you know, yeah. it's crazy. And he, they're so open to giving everything too. Yeah. That's like the thing is like um, uh, I see um. I see a lot of like the the advanced b boys training here. Yes. And I see them watching me, and it's so, it's so intimidating. But also at the same time, it's <laughs> like a it's. But it, that's what it is about a temple, though. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. at a temple you have to be a beginner. Yeah. And and they're okay with that. And what do they There's say? Like, about that. You, you don't want to surround yourself with people that are worse than you, right? Like, you yes. want to elevate yourself by being around people that can push you and motivate yes. you. And, even, yeah. uh, even if it's the most terrifying thing in the fucking world, dude. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> it's so crazy. Because they're beasts. They're yes. literal beasts at what they do. Like, the people that come here are Steve Tarada. Yes. Fucking, oh my God. Literally superhumans in a yes. lot of ways, bro. Like, but, but that is what it is. It's like, this is a temple of. Um, it kind of feels nuts to say this sometimes, but it's like the martial arts world kind of feels superhero-y sometimes. 100%, bro. <laughs> in like the um, the way that like people have different names too. You know, it's like trickers have trigger names. Yes. B-boys have B-boy names. Yes. And there's like this underground culture of respect and like you have your identity, but also you have your other identity that you earn, you know? And yes, it's, bro. I don't know. It's cool. I think the one thing that we pride ourselves on is that we have spent since day one zero dollars on advertising, and that's been on purpose because I wanted to create a place that people sought out. Yeah. I didn't want to be a place that's like a McDojo where like I'm running ads on Yelp and Groupon. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want people here that are just here because they want to drop their kids off. Yeah. Like I want people that are seeking out like where can I learn stunts? Where can I learn like break dancing and all that stuff? You know. What and I'm saying? be in the right environment. Yes. Because it's like the open gyms, dude. It's. The energy is just so free. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really given me a lot. So thank you. Hell yeah, bro. No, thanks for thank being you. a part, bro. And uh, dude, one of the things that I have to ask, and, and, and what's so cool to have you on is because I've already had your brother on here before to talk about his perspective on this. But I want to talk about your perspective because I know he's helped you out in a lot of ways, but I feel like didn't you help recommend him for the Knit Power Rangers that he ended up booking? Uh, no, technically he says that because he's a good dude. Because <laughs> he's a good brother. He's a good All dude. All right, tell, yeah. tell the story of how the entire Power Rangers saga unfolded because what's unique is... That came from stunts, too. You, you are the, only the second person ever to play multiple roles on different seasons, and then your brother was like the third to do so. Really? Yes, Yo. to play different characters, yeah. Well, sick. I take yeah. that. <laughs> he didn't even know. That it. makes me feel good. I mean, I know because I know that a couple of them played different roles. That's yeah. why. Yeah. But um, uh, well, with that, that came from stunts. 
So Yoshi actually got the audition because he was doing the um the the helmet suits. Mm. So he was doing the live parades. shows. Yes. Yeah, I was doing those too back in the day. Yeah, Heck yeah, yeah okay, dude, okay. respect because yeah. it's that's like so much work. It's so tiring. I've been in the suits once, and that was for photos. And I was like, "Holy crap! You have to flip in this. It's not made. You can't for see anything. Yeah. No, dude. It fogs up. You're like, whoa, I'm blind. Like, and so if you break it, it's a thousand dollars. Yes, bro. It's nuts. But, Those um, boots are the worst too. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They're <laughs> blisters everywhere. Yeah. But Yoshi was doing them, and uh, he met the the actors. And uh, when he met the actors, um, I guess a fire lit up in him. And Yoshi is like, he's super passionate. If he's excited about anything, he, he goes 100%. And so then he started talking to him. He was like, how did you guys get this? And from that, he found the, the uh, casting directors. Wow. He cold emailed them in a day of, this is modern day. You don't, you go through casting directors. You know, it's like you go cold through email. your representatives, your management. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, maybe stunts. Stunts is different because yeah, it's yeah. still a little bit old school. But then like, uh, like with this, he just, he kept going. And uh, he even asked if he could bring his brother. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, you're crazy. And this was right after Apple. So I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what, what else? And um, so from that, we, we actually screen tested. And then it didn't work out. But then at that point, we were like, whoa, we could be actors? And most of all, and this was the crazy thing, is like, uh, for us, acting was a goal. But then Power Rangers was the goal. Of course, you know, it was yeah. like... We could be Power Rangers, yeah. Which is now it's like uh, I I want to act. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, yeah. So from that, uh, we had there every two years. That's the thing is like I didn't get an agent after that. I just I only had what I knew, and that was from like commercials. And I got that only because the people there were kind enough to recommend me to people. Yes. So then um, I had only like print. Uh, managers. Okay. Yeah. So then every two years we would go in for it. And then we went in again for uh Samurai, not Samurai, Megaforce. Yep. Screen test again and it didn't work out. So then we were like, all right, game plan. We got to actually prep. So for the next two years, we were just like studying Power Rangers, studying Power Rangers, studying scripting, acting, and all that stuff. Wow. Dino Charge came by. We went in and we did the uh, callback and we got cut. And we're like, what the fuck? Hold on. Um, we got screen You're tested like, I twice. Made it to this. Yeah, for yeah. those who don't know, screen testing is like one of the last, last steps. And we did the producer, the second callbacks. Wow. Power Ranger makes you go through every step. Chemistry test. Yep. Oof. And so and we were like, wait, hold on. And we could do flips and stuff. This isn't, this isn't, come on, you guys made a mistake. So I went and I talked to Iris, which is super unprofessional. <laughs> wait, who's Iris? She's the casting director. Okay, okay, okay. And I hit her up and I was like, please, please, you guys are making a mistake. Um, uh, tell us what you need us to do differently. I will, I will do it differently. I will go to a, uh, an acting coach. You need us to do more tricks. We could do more tricks. Just consider us at least for the producers. Yeah. Let us see the producers. And yeah. she was like, silent. And then two weeks later, she's like, actually, the producers do want to see you. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then this time we went to the producers and I was like, all right, Yosh, let's, let's read it. You do it to me. Because at this point, we were also really competitive. Yeah. yeah we yeah. Were, were brothers. We are both gamers and we also do competitive stuff. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really like show each other our styles, you know? And it's like, he would go in for the acting, I would go in for the acting. And at this point we were like, okay, um, we need to work together or else neither one of us are gonna go through. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I started looking at stuff and I was like, this is really good, but um, Coda feels kind of like scary, you know? Like caveman is supposed to be like grunty, but maybe think of him as like a puppy dog. That's the only thing I said. And then he gives me so much credit for it. And he took that and he ran with it. He ended up booking that one. Yes, he did. I also screen tested for that one, and this one broke me. Because at this point, I was like... How many times did you audition at this point? Audition or screen test? Screen I, test three times. Audition, I at least 20. No at way. Least 20. And yeah. over the course of how many years? Five. Holy crap. Yeah. Okay, okay. And this was like, I was like, I am not going to make it. Yep. da 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 Long story short, Yoshi ends up recommending me for the, the two seasons after. But at this point, I was already an actor. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I had booked two pilots. And I was like, I don't think I want to do Power Rangers anymore. And uh, Yoshi was like, you should just do it. And those two pilots didn't end up getting picked up. <laughs> and long story short, I ended up getting that one. But that was also because of Yoshi. Because I was like, 
the auditions had already gone in and it was like time for a second callback. So if I wanted to get in, I'd have to like really, really rush up and be like, hey guys, please, please, please let me in because you guys are already moving forward. But uh, yeah, because of that, I, here we are. <laughs> no way. And I think yeah. one of the, the coolest things about it was that they generally speaking have the previous cast reveal the new cast. Yes. Which and what makes it so unique is that the previous cast member on your show was your brother. Yep. And that makes it probably one of the craziest stories of all time. That one is on the internet. Um, still, to this day, um, I feel dissociated watching it. I'm yeah. like, that... It's like out of a movie, bro. Yeah. It yeah. felt like it was... It, 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 it was... It, you, couldn't, you could write that in a movie. Yes. You know, you're 100%. like... 100%. Yeah, but... But that's also because Chip wanted it to be that way for the epicness, which he totally got. So. 100%. Yeah. And so how did you keep it a secret from him? How long did you know ahead <laughs> of time? Like, how long did you know that you booked it when you had to, like, keep it a secret? Uh, I, I only kept it a secret for two weeks. But that was because uh, I, we were actually working on a stunt job together. And um, that day, he had called Yoshi to tell him that I didn't get it. And he called me to tell me that I didn't get it. So I broke down in front of Yoshi. Wow. It was actually kind of... If you think about it, it's, it just doesn't happen in the industry. Yeah. You know, like, why would a producer lie to you just for a story? But hey, I, I got a really good story out of it. <laughs> no way, man. That yeah. is crazy, bro. And so... Life is nuts. <laughs> life is so nuts, dog. And so for those that have seen the video and, like, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll try to put it on the screen and stuff like that. Your brother gets handed an envelope. Yeah. And he goes to read it. And he can't even, like, get your name out, bro. It's, yeah, it's... My life is, I'm very blessed. Like, that was just unreal, dude. Unreal. It was unreal. <laughs> unreal. And so off the back end of that, how many episodes or seasons did you get to play the Blue Ranger? I got to play 22. Okay. 22 episodes for two seasons. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a really big blessing. Because you're also, like, set with the whole boot camp of, like, the industry. Yep. You, you get run through everything, man. Like, the Ranger, I feel like the Ranger industry is kind of like the boot camp version of acting wow yeah you kind of get thrown into, uh, into the months, fire you know yeah. yeah it's it's a really great opportunity because you you get to lead a show but also it's like you're like oh this is grueling this is not just fun and games you're you're up at five in the morning it's also not sag yeah non i know that yeah, yeah so um, and it's overseas yeah so they can kind of tweak the rules and bend your arm a little bit and you're just like First job, let's go for it. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. taking the credits and the experience. And you kind of have to take it that way because if you don't, it's gonna, it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, you get kind of jaded about the industry. Yeah, yeah. But the industry's not like that. It's they treat you well in the industry, and it's and they treat you well in Power Rangers as well. It's Hell just yes. very hard. A hundred percent. Very hard. And so, like, how many times? I mean, you kind of just mentioned it here, though. But like, how many times do you actually go in the suit, or do you never go in the suit? Never. Wow. Never. Well, uh, Red Ranger does. Okay. Only for the helmetless scenes. Wow. And the morph. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But never for like the fighting. No way. And so yeah. who do you guys have? You guys have stunt men from over there that are doubling you guys? That, well, we kind of do, but most of the, the footage is actually uh, Toei. Yeah. Which is kind of, it's weird because they didn't renew the contract for next year. So I don't know what's going to happen with Power Rangers. Wow. Yeah. So off the back end of being the Blue Ranger... How do you end up being the Red Ranger on a different season? Yeah, so that was... So Hyperforce isn't technically um, live action. Okay. Hyperforce is canon, but it's, um, it's a tabletop version. Okay. So I do play the Red Ranger for that, but it's not for the TV show. It's, uh, it's, it's um, semi... Okay, just, I'll just start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, break it down. Yeah. Break it down. That's what we're here for. Right after, uh, right after Ninja Steel, me and Yoshi, we were big fans of Dungeons & Dragons. Yes. Yeah, so we, we do a lot of role-playing, a lot of board games, all that stuff. And uh, we were like, let's do a show. Because I was, I was watching Critical Role at the time. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great show. Totally. It's, um, excuse me. But yeah, so I was watching that, and I was like, we could totally do something like this, except maybe with Power Rangers. Obviously getting the rights to it would be a little bit tricky and difficult. Yeah. But I was like, wait, we know Saban. Yeah, We've been hard, a ranger before. <laughs> yeah, like how, how difficult could it be? Yeah. Then I, I, I went through Saban and they were like, uh, you can't take our characters. And I was like, wait, but it's just for an online show. And they're like, no. I was like, dude, this is dumb. So me and Yoshi outsourced and we were like getting studios. We got like this green screen studio to, to do our stuff. I was writing the story and I wanted to make 
like a D and D, but Power Rangers because I wanted to um, kind of like a make a game where because for me my big thing was I wanted to be a Power Ranger. Yeah, and not everybody gets to have the 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 blessing that I was offered. Like, yeah, yeah you can try your hardest to act, but it, the industry doesn't work that way, dude. Totally, totally. It's like you can have a dream, but even if you work hard, you may never get it. 100%. We see people move back home all the time. Yeah. Exactly. And it's really, really heartbreaking. So I wanted to do like a Power Rangers type of thing where you can kind of just create your own Rangers. And so my idea for it was you make your own show. You make your own uh, group of people and you role play it. You create the situation kind of like um, Critical Role. So yeah. at the end, you have a full adventure with your friends where you got to live out that world of being Rangers. Which you can already do if you're creative enough. Yeah. But, I mean, this is like a format for people to play so you can invite more friends. Then, uh, as we were about to launch, Saban hit us up. And they're like, actually, we are interested and we actually have another group of people that are doing the exact same thing, but on our side. And I was like, all right, well, that kind of works out pretty well. Yeah. I came and I met them and I was like, yo, this is, this is great. And you'll fund everything? And yeah, and I was like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Can I design? That was my main thing is like, can I be part of it? I wanted to be a part of it. And I wanted to design. Okay. And they were like, easy. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. No so way. then we started to go into it and it was a long process, but, um, long story short, I did get to design the suits. Crazy. Yeah. So all the suits, uh, for Hyperforce, um, are my drawings except for, uh, the, the green one, Yoshi's. Wow. Yoshi's is, is, uh, their own. Okay. But, uh, they ended up doing it like a live action, not live action, but, um, tabletop and it got pushed into the comics it got pushed into the games and we're canon no way yeah all from uh tabletop games <laughs> so crazy dog I I, can't that's what an idea could do dude you yeah, know <laughs> it's insane dog it's insane that we live in a time and an age where things like that are even possible like 100 years ago 50 years ago that wouldn't be possible yeah you wouldn't be able to get a project like that off the ground and then coincidentally it works out you know yeah because i mean it's like dude like but that's the thing is like, if you truly believe in something and you really want something, you find ways, you know, it's like, yeah. I, I actually want to be a Red Ranger uh, for my season as well. I love Will and um, I'm, I love Preston, which is my character. Yeah. And I'm glad I was a Blue Ranger for that season. Yeah. But my goal was like, I want to be a Red Ranger. Of course, he's a lead. Yeah. yeah. And also like, Red is my favorite color. Yeah. He's like the coolest. And so uh, I, I just, I wasn't, not that I wasn't satisfied, but I wanted to try to see if I could be a Red Ranger too. And so that's when Hyperforce came into play. And I was like, oh, this is an angle where I could try to make this happen, you know? I mean, it's the same thing with Jam. It's like, you look at the, the dragon outside and yes. you're like, this is White Lotus. But also, this is, this is Travis's idea. Yeah, yeah. You know? I feel you. I feel you. Okay, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Holy crap. Yeah, it's like you, when you have a, an idea, you just you push it forward and it, see if the world receives it. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're like, oh my gosh. Not only does the world receive it, it actually did good for the world. Yeah. I, I'm actually, I'm actually contributing, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. shoot, jam is a place to uh, inspire people. This is what I wanted to do, but it's also like working out the way I wanted it to. Exactly. Yeah. You know, That's it's, so it's cool. nice. <laughs> Man. I think one of the things that I'm like, uh, I'm almost, I'm, I'm going to say it like I'm almost jealous of the fact that you have been able to work with your well, brother you. <laughs> so many times on so many projects. And, and for those that even were fans of you guys, um, you know, outside of Power Rangers, I feel like a lot of fans also had a cult following with you guys in regards to Apartment 210, Haiku Hotties and stuff like that. So, whoa, 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 bro. bro. <laughs> I know what's up. Yo, I, know I what's respect up. you so much, I man. Up, I, I, yo, yo. Bro. So much. I, I know, I know everything, bro. Yeah, yeah. I've watched you guys for years, bro. So how... Let people know how Apartment 210 officially launched. Because I know at one point it wasn't just you two. It was, it was a, a group of people necessarily living together. I, um, I wanted Apartment 210 to be kind of like, um, I guess, a fun way to, to promote uh, community for, for men. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Well, in like a, a fun, lighthearted way. That's kind of like fraternity, but that's not so like uh, in your face. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, also because like we were all actors, I, I wanted to give a space where we could all bring something to the table. Yeah. You know, and like, cause also it's like, if, if it's just a channel for like me and Yoshi, then it's just going to be me and Yoshi, you know? Yeah, yeah. And when me and Yoshi are not hundred percent, then what's going to happen to the channel? We have to always be at hundred percent. And so I, I thought like when we first started, it was me and Yoshi and we did like a, just a, a, a gag kind of thing. Then I thought it was just more interesting to put in more personalities. Yeah. And 
it was it was working a lot, but then also like we were all in the industry. So every time somebody booked something, time was nuts. Nobody could get together. Yeah. Which was good too. Like I, I think apartment two center was great as it is, but it's a blessing that everything turned out the way that it did. Yeah. Cause that means that like everybody moved forward in their own industry. You know, I know that uh, up until I think the last time you guys put out footage was like three years ago or something. Yeah, like dude, that. so long ago. <laughs> so long. So ago. long ago. I, I want to. I think that uh, what you, what you're doing, is what is smart. It's what is wise. You know, it's a, uh, you're you're building your foundation. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and I you're continuously doing consistent work, and I think that anything success isn't about hard work. It's about consistent work. Yes. Consistent work is hard work. Yeah, yeah. But That's the hard part about yes. it is being consistent, man. Holy crap. Yes, yeah. But it's not hard as in like the, it's super impossible to attain. It's just like, just take steps. But stepping is so, yeah. So I'll get back to apartment two someday. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I think one thing that's also been really cool is that like, you and your brother have always been very representative of the Asian American culture. We, I don't know how to, um... I, we try to be and we try not to be. Yes. Because it's like, I don't think that they need champions. I think Asian Americans, um, but also we are Asian Americans. Yeah. You know, so at some point you have to have responsibility for who you are, if that makes sense. Because it's like, what I do affects how people are, like me are going to be treated. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I try to be uh, aware. I try to be aware, but I don't think that we try too hard to be like, <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, because um, they don't need us. Like they're good on their own. Hundred you know? <laughs> percent. And and I'm I'm blessed, man. We're living in such an amazing time right now. I never thought that we would see movies like Crazy Rich Asians. You know. Yeah. I never thought that we'd see roles like Kenny Lee on Supergirl. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like, like oh my gosh! And uh, we just did something too recently. Um, I actually don't know how much I. I think we can talk. Don't give away tons of it. Yeah, yeah. You, you can just touch on the service or not name it, you know? It's, uh, we did a DC project that okay. uh, was greenlit, then didn't get greenlit. Okay. But for that project, uh, two of the characters that weren't traditionally Asian were played by me and Yoshi. Wow. Which were Asian Americans. Yeah, totally. So it's, uh, it's just nuts, man. It's, it's just crazy. such a blessing to be in this time. <laughs> so, so crazy, man. Yeah. And I just still can't believe how you got into this industry as trying to become an actor. It's such a unique story. It's not fair. It's not fair. It really <laughs> isn't. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. It's, it's a freak story, and I'm very, very freaking lucky. Bro. Like, and I, I'm aware. I'm aware. That's why I'm here so much. Because, yeah. like, I'm aware of this industry is... Uh, it feels like, um, I don't know. It's just so like, it's so scary. It's just yeah, so yeah, scary. And it's don't. so, it, I'm so lucky to be here. It's not, it's, <laughs> it's such a unique job because it's not guaranteed. You no, know, like no. I have friends that work, you know, 40 hours a week. They have pensions and healthcare and, you know, they're, they're at these jobs just working up the ladder, the corporate ladder over the years. You have that safety, you know? And it's yeah. And whereas we're out here just rolling the dice with our yeah. careers for lack of a better term. And we've both been very blessed to end up where we are at the current stages, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I got to give credit to you and hopefully to myself as well is, uh, I think that we are aware of that. You yeah. know, it's like, we're aware yes, that yes. like, even though we are here, <laughs> It's 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 a blessing to be here. I, I don't <laughs> I don't take it for granted. There's a lot of no, people. No, I can that, tell. A lot of people will always ask me like, "Hey, can you give me advice on like how you got started?" And I'll literally blatantly be like, "My story." I'm is still unique. doing it. Yeah, yeah and I'll yeah. tell them like, "My story is probably one in a million, and yeah. I don't want you to get intimidated by me telling you it because yeah. I'm like, how did you, man?" So. The cliff notes is when I was in college, I got a call for a TV show. There was a non-union TV show called Deadliest Warrior on Spike TV. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just partying, so I was like. Yeah, I'll skip school and come down and do a TV yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. End up doing the show. Met some really good friends who were friends of mine, right? Fast forward to I graduate three months later. I'm down in LA training at Gymnastics Olympica with some friends. And they're like, yo, we have a, a callback for a commercial. Can you drive us? And then we'll go train parkour after. I'm like, yeah, for sure. I drive them to the casting. It's it's the famous the famous casting uh, in Hollywood next to the Petco. That casting office. Oh, thing. La Brea. La yeah, Brea. Yeah, there yeah, you go, baby. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, the Petco yeah. one. <laughs> So I park on the street, they go up into the casting. I just walk up into that big room and I'm just sitting, you know, cause it's a massive room. There's like tw 10 it's casting huge. rooms. Yeah. I'm just sitting there waiting for them, bro. Yeah. They come out of their call back. I'm like, oh, let's bounce. Yeah. The lady who opens the door to let them out goes, who are you? And I go, oh, I'm their ride. She's like, oh, okay. They leave. And then she goes, hey, hey, wait a minute. Can you come in here? I'm like, what? Okay. 
So I walk in and they're like, hey, like, what would you do if you were in the world doing parkour? I'm like, well, I'm about to go train right now. Like, I would do this, <laughs> I do this, I do this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We walk outside, bro. Because I had parked on the street, it was during the four to seven no parking tow away zone. Yeah. My car got towed. Yeah. So I'm like looking down, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, guys, we can't even go train now. My car got towed. Yeah. We're literally dialing the number to see where the tow lot is. And then another call comes in that interrupts it. And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. I answer it and I'm like, hello. And the lady's like, hey, uh, I just met you in the casting office like 10 minutes ago. I'm like, yeah, what's up? She's like, we'd like to taft you on a Coca-Cola commercial. And by that point, you're like, Taft, what is that? <laughs> bro. <laughs> Holy crap. That's how, that's how I got, that's how I got in, bro. Uh, this reminds, um, uh, Samurai in the Garden. Because if oh, you think about it, it's yeah, like yeah. you've been prepared all your life. Yeah. And that, that is, that's the thing too. It's like, at some point, you can't take your story and just give it out to everybody because nobody's going to like fit that role. But also at the same time, it's like, if you are prepared, Sometimes life will elevate you 100% in that way, you know, and it's 100. like if you're meant for it, it will take you there. It ended up being the biggest blessing because it got me into the union. One of my well, buddies. You got tafted. That's I got tafted. nuts. I got tafted by sitting in a room, bro, <laughs> sitting in a waiting room, waiting for my friend. I did background for like five years looking for my vouchers. I couldn't even get them. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Yeah. And, and that's why when people ask me, I'm like, I can't really tell you my story because it's not normal, you know? So. Yeah. But it's like. That's it. That's just the blessing, dude. It's all part of the journey, right? But that's that's the thing too. It's like I talked I talked with your mom a little bit about like um spirituality. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, totally. yeah. But uh she she told me a little bit about like how when you were young, like they felt the spirit of yeah. you. And it's like sometimes things are meant to be the way that they are. Yeah. You know, and it's like yeah, yeah. you just can't you can't fight fate. A hundred percent. It's so crazy, man. And so now off the back end of I guess the success that you've had where are you at right now in your career? Like, did you transition from being someone that never had considered being an actor? Now are you in classes all the time? Do you have a coach? Like, what's your process now that you're a little more seasoned and more, you know, more of a veteran actor? Auditions. Okay. Uh, auditions, I think auditions are, uh, they are your job. Yeah. They're, they're going to be 100% of your life if you ever do acting. Yeah. Uh, unless if you're like so, Super lucky and like at the very top where people just give you roles. Where they seek you out, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, auditions. Um, I'm doing classes, but more to to keep sharp and uh, to remind myself, oh, what's going on in like the script and like tools and stuff. Uh, but a lot of a lot of uh, here, a lot of uh, I think craft building. I think that's okay. uh, for me personally the most important thing about my career. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I think that once you're here the danger is to just audition and just keep it like a wheel. Yeah. And that is, that is a good thing. But, um, if you do that, then you, you continue being just you, you know, and you'll only fit for the roles that you will fit for. Yeah. And that is good. But, uh, like you also got to remember what you look like, what other people can think of you like, and you have to be able to exist in all of those worlds as an actor. Yeah. You know, cause it's like, like I said about the Asian American thing, I'm an Asian American. No matter what people look at me, and you're Asian American. Yeah. You know, so um, it's, it goes for the same thing with acting. You have to know what Asian American, what people think Asian Americans act like. And uh, part of that is like being social, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. understanding what the culture is like. And another part of that is like picking up some of the skills. Cause it's like, um, if there's going to be a hero that's Asian American, you got to think about like in the future, what kind of, what kind of characteristics would he have? You know, and it's like stereotypical as it sounds, probably martial arts. Yeah, probably something. You're yeah. right. Yeah. But I also, I don't think that's a bad thing. And uh, so then I would come here and I'd be like, all right, I'm not a good martial artist. If I want to be someone that is going to be cast as someone that's a good martial artist, I have to put in the time to understand what a good martial artist looks like. Yeah. And even moves like more importantly, because it's like, I think with martial arts, it's a lot about the energy. Yes. It's a lot about like, if you, if, if I'm watching a show and I see a martial arts lead who's like a martial arts master, but he doesn't move like one, it's just going to snap me out of it. No authenticity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I want to I wanna bring that. So coming here, it's uh, to train, I guess, my future. Yeah, to train yeah. my future. I think, it, I think what you're talking about is something that needs to be heralded more often because I get called all the time by actors right. and actresses. Yeah, Thank I get called all the time by actors and actresses who are like, hey, I just booked this role. 
can you start training me? And I'm like, yeah. yo, you should have been training for fucking months or a year ago. That's what I realized when I, I had booked the G thing is like, that's why I said like, it was a pivotal moment in my, my movement career. Yeah. Cause I was like, Oh, this isn't, this isn't just a, for a job thing. That's great. If it's for a job thing, yes. which by the way, amazing job. Thank you. You brother. made me look good. <laughs> I watched the thing and I was like, he looks like he can move. Yo, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, that, that choreo I threw at you is not easy. It's very complicated choreo. Exactly. And it was in a one or two. Yeah, and it looks great. Hard. Like, I, I act, because the thing is, like, I actually, um, I was, this is going to sound weird, but I was watching my past films uh, the other day just to watch how I moved and all that stuff. And I saw stuff after that. And I was like, why is he so stiff? He being me. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, why is he so stiff? He was so good here. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. I understand. <laughs> I understand what's going on. It's the style. Yes. Yeah. Not only is it the style, it's like a... <laughs> I, I was... You, you made me understand what was going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, if, if I don't... The thing is like, if I understand always, then I wouldn't have to have that problem, if that makes sense. So coming here is like... <laughs> to understand 100. for future pro yeah 100 and just to <laughs> just i guess to like quantify it and to put it into perspective for people so that they can kind of i guess uh have like a, a numeric number in their brains because i feel like that's how how humans work H how many hours or days a week are you training and putting in time on your movement and your acting if that makes sense um that's hard because movement Technically, 24-7. Wow. It, technically. Yeah. I mean, um, this is something that your mom taught me. She, uh, at first, she, she taught me how to actively breathe. Yes. And I was like, that's very tiring. Like, holy crap. That's actually not easy to do at all. It's not. Yeah. And when I did it, I was like, I felt high. You know, and she's I like, mean, this is why you don't have to do jokes. Yeah, you can just breathe. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, I do this all the time. Yeah. I'm like, you're, you do it all the time? You're conscious all the time? And she's like, yeah. And um, I'm not at that point yet, yeah. but I'm trying to be. So technically 24-7. Wow, okay. Um, but in terms of uh, being here and actively training it, uh, three hours? Whenever it's open. Wow. Yeah. And you're here almost every day. It's crazy. Uh, if I'm not here, it's because of the eczema. Or you get really bad sometimes. Or your soreness. <laughs> or uh, soreness, I'm still here because it's no stretching. Way. Everybody, That's crazy. yeah, it's, it's just a great environment, dude. That's crazy, man. And, yeah. so, and so obviously, you know, that, that you just touched on briefly, we don't have to hang on it for so long, but uh, eczema is something that a lot of my friends have dealt with over yeah. time. And it's as an fun. actor, how do, you, how do you cope with that? Crying. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh... uh creams and um if if it gets intense steroid shots okay yeah but uh i just i just try to limit like my movement that's the thing that just really sucks it's like i'm in here as much as i can but then you sweat and yes. then sweat builds up which is like such a terrible thing dude it's catch 22 yeah yeah and it's like you feel good by moving but then when you move you sweat and then you sweat you yeah so uh, just creams and wow. try to stay clean. Yeah, yeah, hundred. That's also why, like, uh, I was like, maybe, maybe I should do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So full Thank transparency you for, for you all. This guy is so dedicated that literally, when we end this podcast, he's going straight into training <laughs> here at the gym. In this room. In this room. In this yeah. room. When we clear that's, out that's this to setup, you. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. giving me this because yeah. I also want to say, like, if you didn't give me this space, I wouldn't have it. Wow. And I mean, I text you this every once in a while, like when I get like super emotional. <laughs> Sorry for that, no, but bro. I actually, because the thing is, like, this is my temple. So, so let me let me just say this: um, I sponsor a lot of people. Like my sponsor list of people that I believe in and I let train here is huge, but not everyone takes advantage of it to the fullest. You're so kind. You know what I'm saying? You know, and that. I really mean that. And so, to me, like when I see you, I, I, I see when you post a story or I see when you check in. And I I'm try like, not to post so much because I don't want to like, like I, I don't want to be too buggy and be like, oh, yeah, this kid's just be here posting pictures, you dude, know. But I'm always blown away. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this guy does not need to be there, but he's. There, I love it. You know, I love it. Yeah, I bro. love this place. Dude. I really do. So, Thank you. so, so <laughs> crazy, bro. And so, obviously, with the way that the world is going right now. Um, do you prefer the Zoom auditions or do you prefer in-person ones? Do you think we'll ever get back to that? I prefer in-person. Me too. Yeah. I like to take the room over. I yeah. feel like within a few seconds, you can generally read you the room. You can feel it. Yes. Yeah. Like energy is a real thing. And uh, Zoom auditions are great, but also it's like, then it's my energy. Yeah. Great. You'll get to see just my performance, which is fantastic as a performer. Yeah. For my ego, great. But f to book a role, you need to understand What's going on? Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's not just about my world. It's about the world that the, the director might see. And the casting director understands that. 
and I do not feel her energy if I don't see her or I him. Know. Yeah, you know? I know. So. It's so tough, man. It's so tough. And so with that being said right now, what is the focus of your career? Like, is your goal to just continue to audition? Or do you have a certain type of role that is your next dream? Because growing up, you always wanted to be a Power Ranger, right? Yeah. Now that you've checked that off the list, is there anything else left on the list? Um, acting still. Acting is still 100% my goal. Um, but I have shifted my interest into more movement-based stuff. Wow, okay. Yeah, I would love to do uh, creature work. Wow. Yeah, I, I am heavily fascinated by it. No way. Yeah, and uh, I mean, sometimes you, people will see me in here just crawling on the yeah, floor yeah. here. <laughs> dude, we, sh we should talk about that. I'll hook you up with some guys to do creature work, yeah. I would love that, yeah. dude. Um, I I would love to do creature acting. Okay. Like um, Shape of Water, that wow. kind of stuff. Bro, you know what's so unique is a lot of us hate that stuff. Like, really? Yeah, because some of us just don't don't want to deal with the suits or the green suits or the prosthetics. But you get to like, be something that doesn't exist. Yeah, Like, bro. truly, you, you are an otherworldly being bro you know I'll, 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 I'll have to connect you with some friends of mine like i have some friends that literally that's all they specialize in is they're the creature guys or they're like robocop in the suit or yeah. they're like you know i would love to be one skeleton of those. guys yeah. Yeah, yeah all right no way dog that is crazy I, I never envisioned that's like the ultimate goal yeah that's why I like um because also it, it goes perfectly with like all the stuff i'm doing like acting uh break dancing because like break dancing is a lot of uh, a lot of funk. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's like even though you're doing like the old school stuff, when you throw in the funk, it's kind of weird, you know. And it's like some of the like weird stuff is kind of creaturey. Yeah. Like when you're doing full work, it's kind of like a maybe kind of like um like a animal person yeah. or even like a ninja, you know. And it's like a, all that is just movement based. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think that goes towards it marries everything that I want to do. Okay. Hell yeah, man. That's so, so dope. And yeah. so outside of this, are you still streaming? Are you still doing stuff online? Like I'm trying to. Okay. I'm trying to. Um, for the past two and a half years, I've been here not only doing like martial arts stuff, but I'm also trying to do like dance and yeah. I'm trying to grow in that field as well. And uh, the benefit of that is that you get to grow, but also the hard part is like, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. You know, so um, I'm trying to like seeing your setup. I was telling you about this earlier. Yeah. I want to, I want to start making like, content but i don't want to do it until i get good enough okay so it's it's uh but then also it's like then what is good enough when is good enough yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure that out so i mean seeing this i have no excuse i have no excuse i have to start you know hell yeah yeah so, <laughs> i feel convicted so dope, <laughs> so dope, and so like obviously you've been dropping gems left and right about your own personal journey and stuff like that but uh, you know do you have any basic tips or advice, I guess, for someone that maybe is listening it back home and, you know, they want to be an actor, they want to get into this business. Do you have any uh, tips or advice that can maybe save them some time or just help them along their own personal journey? Um, find happiness where you are first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, not happiness. Happiness, that's, that's actually a very difficult thing to ask. Find contentment. Yes. Yeah. Find contentment. So that way, when you do strive for the goal towards this industry, every step of it is fun. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, I, I have traveled down a part of the path when it wasn't fun. And it was just like hustle, 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 work, 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 work. And that puts a strain on you because nobody gives you the, the reward that you're going to get with the amount of stress that you're giving out. Yeah. You know? But if you find contentment in every step of the way. And that's, again, why I thank you and God for the existence of this temple. Yeah. Because it allows me to step in the direction of what I want. Yeah. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still very far from making it as an actor. Very, very far. And my sanity depends on what I do every day. Yeah. And coming here, it gives me the routine of like, I'm, of I could do this every day. I love doing this every day. Yeah. Sure, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't made it yet, but... If my life is going to be like this every day and just at least I get the opportunity to keep auditioning and they're not going to kick me out and I get to keep <laughs> being here. Yeah. Thank you. Like I get to come here and have a community of people that will say hi every once in a while. And uh, if they want to teach me something, they will and elevate me. It's nice because then you can keep doing that. And if you're not content where you are, 
you are going to get bucked off that horse. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. I'm, I'm so glad that you said that in those words. Like, I was very curious what your answer was going to be. And once you start, I was like, that's exactly what I would say, man. It's hard, dude. This industry is hard. <laughs> this industry, yeah, nothing's guaranteed. It's not normal. Yeah. And uh, it eats up people and spits them out all the time, man. It's, very easily. Uh, yeah. Very, very easily. And so, yeah, if you are not in a good mental space, it's going to wear on you and it'll it'll destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. One thousand. Yeah, easily. So, yo, with that being said, man, this is a question I'm curious to get because it's one I ask everyone um, before we get out of here. And I'm super curious because you have such a unique perspective on things. Where do you see yourself five years from now? And then where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Ideally. Ide oh. Yeah, ideally. I yeah. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, I have a realistic view of it, too. Realistically, probably around here, five years from now, realistically, same, same place-ish, except more credits, yeah. bigger credits, yeah, yeah. and more skills and better skills. That's realistically. Ideally. That's what I want to hear. I book in two years, two to three years, I book the next lead for a creature film. Okay. It's creature acting. Wow. Yeah. Creature acting where I have prosthetics. I'm like a, maybe a reptilian thing. I don't no know, way. something, but it's deep acting. And it requires a lot of deep movement, something that's very difficult for actors. Yeah. Like maybe even like, yeah, that requires a lot of flexibility. Yeah. And uh, strength. And uh, I lead it and it becomes a hit. And uh, in five years, I will be celebrating winning an award for it. Wow. That is the ideal. But yeah, realistic. I'm happy with the realistic. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. Yeah. Man, that's so crazy. I think what's so unique about what you're saying is that like for a lot of people, their goal is to ultimately be in front of the camera, showing their face and speaking. Yeah. And you've been there and now you almost want to go back a step where you're going to be covered and be a creature. And because you'll it's more fun. Yeah. You get to be something like, like, yeah, acting, acting is fun. Acting yeah. is really fun, but being a person is really fun. But being something that does not exist in this world is nuts. Like, That's like the ultimate role, I guess, in a lot yeah. of ways, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like you you actually, because also the thing too is like, it, imagine if this role does exist. Let's say that this role was like shape of water, but the creature was like talking. Yeah. How many people could pull that off? How many? Exactly. How many? But an acting role where it's an Asian American rom-com lead, how many people could pull that off? Thousands. Thousands so of people could true. be a good boyfriend. So true. How many people could be an amazing creature who can show human emotion and yet otherworldly depth? Yes. That's not, that's hopefully that's where I can go. Hopefully. But that's a lot of training still. So, Dude, that's you know. so dope. Because I, I, the one thing that I will say is that I don't think many people are thinking that route. And so you probably have a better chance of just Hopefully. on the sheer yeah. fact <laughs> that people are not even trying to do that. You yeah, because yeah, uh -oh. also it's very interesting. Yeah. It's such an interesting, uh, but that's the thing is like, because it's such a niche thing, I, I don't think there's, there's going to be a lot of people looking to create those types of films. I, I would have never guessed that that was going to yeah. be your answer, bro. Yeah. Never. It's just so random, but I, so I would love crazy. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Yo, dude, man, this has been, this has been a dream to catch up and learn yeah, dude. Like this about you, bro. <laughs> I can't even, whenever I tell people a story about how we met, it's so surreal. And then to fast forward. You feel forward, like my right big now. bro, man. Dude, just yeah, to be sure. real, like, cause yeah. I call your mom mama. I mean, everybody yeah, calls everyone calls mama. my mom mama. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. mama Wong. Yeah, yeah, but also like my my career started with you. Yeah, and it's just it's been crazy the way that like things worked out. You, the so. next the next step will be you as the creature and me as the stunt coordinator. Yo, yo, put it out in the universe. Yo. What's up, y'all? We put it yep. out there. Five years from now, we on a set. I'm the coordinator. <laughs> He's the creature, and we killing the game, dog. Yep. Oh man, yo. So, bro, I appreciate you taking the time to come out here and share a small part of your yo, story. Thank you for having me, man. Let's not make this the last time. Hopefully, we'll yeah. connect in a couple years when you're <laughs> when you're on set as that creature. Um, yo. But yo, before we get out of here, can you just look in that camera and let people know where they can continue to follow you and stay up to date with your own personal journey and what you got going on? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Peter S. Adrian. Same with Twitter. Um, on IMDb, Peter Adrian Sidarso, and hopefully soon you will know me as B-Boy Frog. Hey. Hey. Yo, guys, with that being said, please be sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe for brand new episodes each and every week. Join us every Monday for Jam Breakdowns and every Friday for brand new Jamcast, interviewing influential members of the movement community like Mr. Peter Sidarso himself. So with that being said, guys, get even one more very special shout-out. Thanks for coming through, bro. I really appreciate it. Dude, thank you for <laughs> Yo, same dog, same. And as always, guys, coming at you, coming through, I'm your host, Travis Wong. Thanks for joining us here on another Jamcast. Until next time, we'll see you all soon. Peace.